everyone, and welcome back to Pete and Jeremy's D&D's Time. This is game two this evening, an adventure I have entitled A Deathly Serious Problem. Uh, and I'm joined by four great adventurers this evening, including one, uh, one, well, let's say he's been, he's been out for a while, but it's good to have him back. Um, but first and foremost this evening, I'd like to, we're going to just take a minute to introduce everyone, and yeah, it should be good. So first, uh, we have Frostbite. Frostbite, how are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Now, Frostbite, uh, you are, um, how do I put this? You've recently become a, a fabled hero in the land of D&D time. How, how do you feel about that? Like, how, how has that changed your, your life? It was inevitable. Oh, shit. Okay, it was just inevitable. Wow, that's a very, like, headstrong way of looking at it. I, I'm just befuddled. Um, all right. So, I mean, it was inevitable, sure. But what is that? Uh, what have you been doing with your newfound fame? Um, have you been spreading the word about your hive? Have you been uh, making connections, hanging out with, uh, you know, with the high, uh, top brass? Or just being you? Not the duties for my queen uh, changed, but uh -huh. not. Too, but they're not too differently. I'm still, you know, collecting information for her. It's no, Just the same uh, old. Yes, most of the same, but though more high-profile targets lately than uh -huh. I'm used to. So are you kind of like a spy in that regard? Or like, is this a more diplomatic uh, thing? Spy, diplomat. Uh, Ooh, not much of a difference to you, huh? Not <laughs> so much difference. Same? Ooh, all right, fair you enough. Know, assassin uh, would I need to be. Well, Frostbite, assassin you may need to be tonight. Uh, I guess we'll have to find out as the adventure unfolds. Welcome back. I, I hope you have a great time. Um, our next hero this evening to join us is Zorark Drek. Zorark, how are you doing? Oh, I'm feeling so wonderful. <laughs> so, Zorark, uh, you're one of the few goblin adventurers here in Bartholomew's Adventuring Company. Um, the self-proclaimed pirate lord. Have you been lording over some of the other pirates on the Crimson Coast since you uh, became a fabled hero? Like, do you have a boat again? A ship? Or of course. are you still in the market? Of course! I got a ship, and guess what's on it? Um, Probably a crew, some cannons, hopefully treasure? No, 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 even no, even better than that, I got, I, I managed to get the, the Horde Lord Snord's throne on it. You <laughs> took the Horde Lord Snord's throne and put it, you put it on your ship. Yes, it, you know, it is my ship, it is, it is now my throne, I shall rule the seas. So is this, is this, is this like in the crow's nest so you can climb up and be comfortable while surveying? Is it uh, like... No, the... it's in the captain's quarters, of course. Oh, okay. I, just, I wasn't sure. I mean, I could I could see you, Zorak Drex, like it being the figurehead on the front of the boat and you just riding on the front of the boat. I could see this in a lot of different ways, so I needed to make sure I understood. Nah, I, use, I put it in my captain's quarters. It's basically like a throne room now, except I'm not actually a king. I just rule over the seas. Mm -hmm. So... Okay, so a king and a lord are very different. What's what's the difference? Hmm, I don't. I mean, they both rule. They both rule in a certain way. It's just kind of different. You know what, Zark? I guess being a not king or and not a lord myself, I just couldn't know. Uh, maybe someday. Maybe someday I'll know. And I'm uh, finally ready for some more plundering, and I'm eager for it. <laughs> well, maybe you can get some plundering done this evening. Um, Perfect. Good luck. I hope you enjoy Thank the adventure. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, our third hero this evening is uh, Sotaria Avenia. Sotaria, how are you doing? How many times do I have to tell you this? If you keep asking me that question, I'm going to have to kill you. That's a great. That's a great point, Sotaria. I forget this every time. I just let me let me ask you a different question. How has your um work trying to like get information out of Bartholomew. How's that been going? Any progress? I've I've decided to leave Bartholomew alone. Uh-huh. He's our 
Sorry you have to make me miss here, though, but as far as getting any information out of them, eh, uh, my, my goals have been more profitable. Oh, yeah. You've been making that sweet coin? Yeah, I've been making that sweet So, even just, though, so Taria, even have, my, Oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to ask, so, so, so Tara, you love gold. There's no getting around that. Have you tried to Scrooge McDuck your gold, like jump into it, and does it work? No, and I have no idea. And who is the Scrooge McDuck you talk about? I don't know. He's some mythical character of, of your. Um, I, I heard about him in a story once. If he has but, a bunch of gold, I need to meet him. Yeah, right? I heard Bartholomew has cast an enchantment upon his gold, lets him literally swim in it. So maybe maybe you should start looking into whatever did that. I mean, how much gold have you amassed at this? Is it like a fairly sizable hoard, or is it kind of still modest but nice? Mm, no. See, I've been having problems with thieves. I really need to oh, shit. to uh, I need to talk to a couple of people. But that that's fine. Mm. That's neither here nor there. So come on, let's hurry up so I can get the mist here so I can start bugging still first. Oh, of course, of course, absolutely, <laughs> Satari, absolutely. Um. And last but certainly not least, the return of Baxter Risewell. Baxter, um, how are you doing? It's been a while. Yeah, how are you doing, kiddo? You know, I'm doing okay. Um, it's been it's been a long time since I've seen you around. I mean, have you been traveling around the lands of D&D &D time doing anything in particular that you might want to share? Or what's, uh, what's been going on? Jeremy, have you ever had to actually witness the aftermath of what each and every one of these so-called adventurers do? I heard about Frostbite way, way back when he first started. You know why? Because I got to end up meeting one of his victims. I got to end up seeing them put in the ground. I had to perform the service myself. And I had to watch his kid and his widow crying over it. I had to put a hand on their shoulder. And I had to end up going, Now, it seems this Frostbite character seems to be uh, very proud of what he's capable of, but doesn't think twice about what he leaves behind. Just as long as he gets paid gold. Same thing could be said for this uh, wood elf who apparently, hey, it's all about the gold. Doesn't matter the blood or the wounds left behind. That's where I come in, Jeremy. Mm -hmm. See, I'm a grave digger by trade, and I take my job very seriously. It ends up turning into a matter, and it seems no matter where adventurers go, all they do is leave bodies, and somebody's got a problem. Somebody's got to snip put them down. Somebody has to take all the bad people and put them down. Well, to be fair, that first guy <laughs> was trying say. to kill us. <laughs> to be fair, I mean, Ross, well, I don't think I don't think I don't think that, that I, I, I don't think, think, that... think Baxter is criticizing you so much, Frostbite. It's just saying, you know, there are bad things. Still, there there are, there are negative side effects to even when you kill bad people, right? Yes. Yes, but that first guy that I killed when I arrived was Mantis. And he tried to kill us by feeding us to his date. I think yeah. we were justified in killing and having his date kill him <laughs> instead. And what do you think he would be telling me if he was the one still standing? Mm. For that is story, isn't it? Oh, uh, uh, we didn't perfectly know well why he was trying to feed us to his girl. He yeah. just didn't want to defend. He just didn't want to. Yeah. He just wasn't fast enough to run Have away. you talked to Lori? Did you talk to Lori at all? Frostbite? Yes. His widow? She wasn't happy about it. Wasn't happy. She was left on the ground crying because what you done. To be fair, she did try to eat us. <laughs> yeah. And now all of a sudden I got to dig a third grave. But that's your handiwork. Well done. Be impressed. Enjoy the time you have above ground. It ain't forever. 
So as uh, y'all are having this conversation, <laughs> you've been you've been traveling along uh, the roads in the kind of southwest of the land of D&D time, an area called the Small Kingdoms, home to, well, dozens of small fiefdoms, kingdoms, and principalities of all manner. Um, today, you've been heading toward Montag, which is a small kingdom nestled in the base of um, kind of a lonely mountain surrounded by forests. And yeah, as you've been making your way down there, the grass is green, the air is fresh and crisp, but there's just kind of a, almost a darkness that follows you uh, as you travel, like almost foreboding. You've been walking for a while, and I imagine Baxter's, you've been giving him the spiel, telling him about the truth of how it is, how you act here in Barthes. Wow. What can I say? I'd like to see a bigger picture, all in all. And, after all, I do take pride in my work. And I don't mind telling Frostbite about the details, the sawdust at the base of the earth. You know, for propriety's sake. Now, now, handsome. Don't worry, don't worry. The other bodies here, I just haven't found yet. Now, now, handsome. All been looted. We gotta play nice they work with by these me. boys, remember? Well, today, what your mission is, what you're supposed to do, is a, uh, a hermit who lives out in the woods here, in this, uh, this kind of idyllic country villa or city, um, city-state, rather, uh, has required your help with, with something. He's been very vague about the whole situation, uh, all you got was a general location um, based on a few landmarks and a name, which is Nal. So you've been traveling for a time. You passed through the actual city of Montag. It's a fairly um, generic, adventuring kind of medieval town. There are a few taverns, lots of, of peasants, and the peasantry are all over. Um, people hanging their clothes to dry between the two to three story buildings uh, cobbled streets, a big central city square and well the run of the but you've traveled are they like Mont- really mm-hmm. are they really poverish or is this like the well to do place um it's kind of somewhere in between a Montag uh, it seems to be it's the kind of city where it does well enough that the poor aren't treated too badly um, but it isn't done well, and like it isn't so rich that the wealthy become super powerful and then further, you know, beat down the. So it's that very good middle ground of poverty level. I say good, but like not horrific middle ground. You know, there's no Henry Ford auto. I guess Henry Ford is good actually. There's no. no I won't feel too bad so about picking a few pockets. Yeah, so oh, absolutely not. So sorry, absolutely not. There are definitely some people with some money, not a ton of them, but they're around. So basically, yeah, it's... <laughs> Go ahead, uh, 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 Frostbite. I forgot the word. <laughs> oh, okay. You can let me thinking. know when you hit it. But, sorry, if you want to pick some pockets as you travel through the town, uh, you can go ahead and roll me... I don't know, let's... let's go, roll me a D100 first, and then I'll tell you to roll a number of, of checks. That. This is just to see how good of money they have. The higher, the better. Suburbs. Uh, yeah, yeah that's, kind of, yeah. Yes, yeah, the suburbs of cities. You so know, start... you know, I this Null guy, more, not to be rude, but more like Null, because this place is a whole lot of nothing. Where's well, all the loot? He doesn't live here. He lives out in the forest a little way Wow, off. that's, even, that's have to, even less loot. You just have to travel through here to get to uh, one. Uh, there's a, a road sign um, on the other side of the city that you have to see, and that'll lead you towards in the right direction. I'm just uh, gonna pass Sarah? by and give people some glances. Mm-hmm. Maybe they'll fear me. Can you give me a uh, uh, a sleight of hand check as you're picking pockets along your way? Oh my god. Alright, uh, so as you're picking pockets around, yeah, you, there's like a very wealthy like wine merchant that probably owns some vineyards out there. They're dressed in kind of uh, poofy, frilly clothes and you're like, oh yeah. And you just kind of slip by and as you go, you pull something out of his pocket he doesn't notice for even a moment um and it appears to be a small platinum stopwatch 
which ticks rhythmically in your hand. Um, and yeah, as you look at it, it looks like it has um, the little hands are made of not um, metal, but like a black on it. Very pretty. You figure it's worth quite a bit of money. I'll keep it. Looks uh, looks over at the goblin. Don't try me. <laughs> well, I'm so sorry. No one knows you've picked this man's pocket. Literally no one. Okay. At this point. You rolled a 27, so... Which is on a natural 20, so you're good. Um, and we can say... Cause huh? Zora, we can say that maybe you pick a few more pockets and get some change along the way as well. But that's like... That's your big haul here. Um, probably thousand gold pocket watch. They're gonna be very sad when they find out it's gone. Uh, oh well. Come on, gentlemen. Let's hurry up and get this over with so I can get my money. It's always about the money with you. Hey, hey, she's not the only one, okay? Money is power, alright? Goblin. You don't know Jack about yeah, money or power. I mean, look at you. You end up having a tugboat with a piece of iron on it. How well do you think that's going to stay afloat? How dare you insult my <laughs> craftsmanship with all of a capital ship? As, uh, as it starts to get it. a little heated, you guys hear a... And they're funny when you talk. What's, what's that? Well, as, you, you, as you guys start to go like back and forth, it starts to get a little heated. There's a... Burr, 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 burr of... um. Uh, it sounds like a horn being blown, and you can see up ahead of you um, in the main street, it seems to be kind of blocked off. There's a big crowd. And as you kind of get up to it, you can see that there's a procession of people that are coming through. Uh, it appears to be a funeral procession. Mm. Oh, yeah, so I, I don't want to deal with that. I'm just going to pass by that and not deal with that. I mean, it's that. cutting your direction right off. It's cutting right through the center of town. Well, I'm going back to where I came and finding another way, then. Hey, 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 Goblin, goblin. Observe some funerary rites. You might learn something. And who knows? You might end up finding that the inevitable is quite profitable. You know, you are drunk. And I know I'm not. It happens when you happen to be 95 years old, 20 of which was spent in a bag. Ooh. The, the crowd kind of like parts a little bit away, like looking uncomfortably at Baxter. Uh, and yeah, you can see that there are uh, a handful of knights. There are um, probably a dozen of them. Uh, three at the front, three in the back, and on each side of this large coffin. They're dressed in like bright gold and... Um, gold and red armor. They have that kind of frilly gold and red feather poking out of the tops of their helmets. And yeah, it appears to be a funerary procession, uh, procession for a knight. Do you want to just wait for them to pass? It looks like they should be gone pretty soon. They're not going I'm, super slow. I'm fine with waiting. Best not, best not to dis best not to disturb the honor of the people that die honorably. See, now I'm starting to like you. I'm not about to do anything, but I will ask one of the uh, other people who's standing on the side of the road uh, what happened, if there is anyone. Yeah, there are, there are plenty of people around. Uh, a few people are, like, sad. They're, like, cr you know, uh, dressed in black, dabbing eyes, you know, a tragedy of some kind. But most of them, most people around are just normal uh, townsfolk um, that seem to be paying their respect. Uh, and as I you don't, don't want to ask one of the I don't want to ask one of the mourners. I would rather yeah. ask one of the other, I guess, regular dress people. So, uh, what's the story with the uh, with the oh. hero? Yeah, it's Mo one of the Montague's knights. They um, they were out in the forest hunting monsters. It, there are a lot of monsters in the forest around here, and we've been short on adventures lately. They've been really slacking off, not really doing their job. Um, we're a big adventure in town. A lot of people come through. But the Montague's Knights try and keep this safe, and every once in a while, one of them falls. I see, I see. And you said there's about lots of monsters in the forest, huh? Oh, there are tons. Usually. Like I said, the, the Knights have been in there because the adventurers haven't really been doing a great, great job. And the Knights are pretty effective. If you've ever fought a Knight, I, mean, I haven't, but... I've heard they're tough as nails. They're not so tough if they don't see you coming. 
she elbow she elbows frostbites in the in the gut. Hush. <clears throat> I heard they're pretty. Uh, I heard they're pretty tough. So uh, thank you for that. We'll be on our way. Come All on, right. idiots. <laughs> the, 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 oh, the dude God. doesn't seem to have picked up on your comment, uh, Frostbite. He didn't like get that. That was like I'll just stab him in the back. Nah, he, he didn't. It went over his head. Um, you saying Baxter? Uh, Baxter at this point will end up joining, walking alongside. Um, surely there are some mourners who are dressed more appropriately for the funeral, and maybe somebody who might be able to give a clear understanding. A Montague Knight's funeral, well, that's quite a piece of work and quite pricey. Yeah, I mean, do you guys want to follow the funerary procession? It's heading kind of in the right direction. Is it in the same direction as we're going? <laughs> I mean, somewhat. Question. It's not totally out of the way. Again, okay, you're we'll meeting follow. a dude out in the middle of the woods, so you don't you don't know where he is in the woods necessarily, so he's out there. <laughs> okay. Then let's, okay. Follow the, then let's follow the Maltese Knights. And see yeah. If so for all of you uh, with your own reasons, Frostbite maybe for interest, Baxter out of respect, mostly, uh, and Zorark and Sotaria for uh, cash money. Uh, yeah, you follow the procession and it comes to like the northeast part of the city where there's um, it leaves the city gates and there's a bit of a graveyard out there. Um, simple iron fences don't really keep much out besides maybe a wandering cow. And you do see a few wandering cows in the field. Um, around the city. But yeah, they go into a simple little graveyard. Um, there are some much wealthier looking people in there. It seems like the Montague's Knights are popular here in the city uh, and well-funded. And yeah, there's um, a much more intimate, like, actual funeral process there. Um, maybe 40 people? Still a fair amount, but you might stick out a little bit unless you, like, tried to blend in. Actually, well, some of you would fit in perfectly fine. Like, Baxter, you're a human. It's mostly humans here. You look like an undertaker to a degree. So you're probably good. No one's going to bat an eye at you. Um, well, I brought a shovel for a reason. <laughs> the rest of you, though... We stick, might... out. We stick out like a sore thumb. Yeah, and if, if you want to try and, like, get in, I, I, you could roll check if you... Um, maybe just a... Um, I don't know. A... a stealth check, or uh, I'd even give you, like, a performance check to blend in if you want it. Stealth. <laughs> stealth. Sure. Um, Would I be able to use, given the fact that What are we using stealth funeral. for? You're fine, sweetie. <laughs> uh, Remember. What was it, Baxter? I was wondering if a knowledge religion check would allow an alternative re in means. Given oh. I know the ritual. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Uh, and, and to answer your questions, Rark, um, the uh, the check is for... Um, what was it? My brain just totally wrapped out. See uh, how much for... you stick out like sore thumbs or not. <laughs> exactly. It's just oh. blending in with the crowd. Well, that's easy for me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, overall, you guys succeed pretty handily. Um, there's really, it's not that difficult. Uh, Frostbite's one that stands out the most because you have many arms and you're a spider human. Uh, you're a spider, I'm oh, sorry, not even a spider. You're like a, a vaguely human-shaped spider creature. Um, but for the most part, people are too distracted. There's definitely like the closer family to this night here and it, um, some well-to-do like magistrates or judges or things that are around. Um, a couple of like wealthy merchants that maybe have known knew this guy. Um, there's a lot of wine and grapes and like very nice cheeses and, and meats and things that are out. It's kind of like a, it's almost like as much of a celebration as it is like a, do you guys want to like try and steal things from these people or do you just want to witness? Um, combinations more than anything. I want to know exactly what might have done this night in, if it might be relevant, a night dying in the line of mm -hmm. duty 
while the tragedy also serves to our benefit as a warning to what we might be getting involved in. And I, for one, do not want to end up going in empty-handed. Sure. Um, I'm walking yeah. over and stealing some of that food. I mean, the food's just out. You don't have to steal it if you don't want. Or you can try and steal it. There's some nice, like, cutlery. There's a big silver ewer on the table, which is at least worth 25 gold. No, 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 no. I'm not stealing from these people. I'm just going to go and grab some food. Okay. I have standards. <laughs> You're just going to enjoy delicious food. Yeah, no problem. It's very tasty. I agree with her. I don't want to steal anything either. These people don't deserve it. <laughs> Frostbite, are you stealing anything? Or are you just I'm confused? I'm just going to take some food. Sure. <laughs> you, guys just, to like... you guys are all just hanging out watching. Um, yeah, back, back, back to the big point. Yeah, yeah, back to your paying attention. This is your this is your jam. The rest. Oh, oh, you're making a distraction, Frostbite. What are you doing? You know, but but with my unique way of eating. <laughs> oh gosh! All right. So I just unique. pictured a spider wrapping a cake up in webbing and <laughs> lay, trying to dissolve it from the inside and just let it fester before slurping up the center. <laughs> So, More or less. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. So, Frostbite, everyone's, everyone's looking at you like, there's a lot of talk going on. Like, what's going Who is this person? Did he know them? Um, but they're not sure. But it's like they want to <laughs> confront you, but it'd be awkward. Um, and so it's a really weird situation. Baxter, you get to get right in there. You can roll me either a perception or a medicine check to try and, like, get a good idea of this person's body. Well, either one works. Hey. Okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm you have an advantage on the roll because uh, of the distraction. So oh, that's, we're okay. gonna take the 17 on that. But yeah, uh, you get a good look at him at one point, and it does not take you much to figure out what happened because he's been kind of put back together and painted, um, and that confounds you um, a little bit. But yeah, it appears that he was petrified, turned to stone, and broken to pieces. He's got all sorts of little tiny chip marks, uh, as if something had been, like, chiseling or trying to, like, pierce the stone and breaking it apart. Like but yeah, he's been put back into one piece and then painted to look like he's still flesh and everything. Um... Let that me guess. Took 12 nights to carry him. Let me guess. They ended up uh, having to shatter the limbs because he was <laughs> there petrified in that screaming pose because he realized what was happening. You know that point where the vocal cords start to get tight and you can't scream but or, or breathe, but you realize that you're still alive for that last few seconds of life. And then they shattered him in very careful manner in order to try and make it look like he's rested peaceful. But they got the eyes right. The fear stares back at him. I want to make work. a joke about him in pieces, but I'd rather not. <laughs> so Baxter, are you are you like monologuing this, or are you asking someone, or? Uh, yeah, you, uh, asking the funerary director, like, uh, because he's oh, yeah. he's admiring the craft more than anything. Um, maybe even giving a few points on how to make stone look flesh. This isn't the first petrified person he's yeah. buried. I think uh, the dude, so they're, the person the funeral person who seems to be leading the whole deal is dressed in like vibrant purple robes with white accents. Clearly a follower of some faith you don't recognize. And they say, oh yes, this is a curious case. I've had quite a few of these lately. <sighs> we found them petrified out in the, in the forest, already partially broken. Uh, many pieces just missing. Most of the chips were natural. We did have to break the arms and put them back together. Actually, as you can see, there are little bits of clay in there for parts that were missing. Overall, we did a pretty good job, though. I, do. I think you should be proud of this work, sir. And if I might end up suggesting, next time, put a little bit of a glaze over the eyes. Brings them to feel a little bit of life still. Yes, um... Thank you. I'll keep that in mind. Well, from one professional to another, sir. 
Uh, Father Baxter Virian. Roswell, uh, yes, Father Virian. 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 Oh, okay. Uh, I haven't seen you at the guild meets. He kind of looks around. I'm not sure what you mean. I am an undertaker by profession. Uh, yes, no, no. Don't get up. But well, I must move on. I must console those who need more earthly. And one last question. Do you have any idea what might have done this or know somebody who has witnessed? You tell, uh, yeah, yeah, he tells you he, he's but a simple uh, and is not not a, not well know, um not well educated of the monsters. Mm, more's the pity. He says a quick blessing over the corpse and moves on. Okay. So Tari looks at the other two. Come on, I think we learned everything we need to. Uh, I think he's found out everything. Let's uh, get to the woods. Yes, let's get to nature. <laughs> okay. So yeah, you uh, begin to head into the forest. Um, as you head to the northern area of the city, you see that the roadway up ahead um, that you were supposed to follow, and you see the big sign post um, leading up uh, in the distance. One uh, arrow points up toward the mountain pass. So you see the mountain in the distance. The other one points into a small fort. You know you're supposed to travel along the forest path and then just go straight when it turns, and so you do. Um, and as you're walking through the forest, you hear the chirping of birds uh, and other wildlife until all of that comes to a stop. You've been walking through the forest for maybe 15, 20 minutes off path, it, and all of the wildlife just kind of stops making sounds. You know, the birds are gone, the crickets are gone, all you hear is the soft cracking of underbrush. And you can tell something isn't quite right. Uh, is looking for birds, crickets, anything like that. Probably in stone form. Uh, and yeah, as you look down, that is part of the... Actually, no, you don't actually see anything like that. Like, there would not be petrified crickets or anything of the like. Uh, Frostbite puts on his blindfold. Oh, right, you have your blind... Oh, shit! All right, cool. You have a, your blindfold on. Uh, anything else anyone would like to do? People can look uh, around if they want. Yeah, I think I will prepare myself. And Baxter starts to murmur a few words. I have out one short sword, but at the same time, I don't like this at all. <laughs> I have my, I have my ranged weapon ready. I know when trouble is afoot. What are all of your passive perceptions? Fifteen. Eleven. But I have blind sight up to sixteen. Fourteen. Okay. So, um, yeah, as you guys are out there, uh, you hear anyone with a past perception of a 12 or higher hears this. Uh, you hear a cracking uh, of... Not even not even so much a cracking uh, as a, uh, a creaking of, of a branch off to your right. And what seems to sound like the fluttering of wings. And as you look up there uh, in that direction, you see... Uh, a very bizarre looking creature. It's maybe about the size of a turkey. Uh, it has leathery wings, a big crooked beak, uh, and kind of brightly colored red and yellow feathers poking out of the top of its head. It looks like a little, like, dragon chicken, for lack of a better, uh, a better word. It's kind of got a dark blue-black coloration on its back and a more tan underbelly. And yeah, it's just hopping around in trees, uh, in the branches of a tree. And it looks like it is hunting a crow, which is sitting in a nearby, uh, a nearby place. But that's the only real creature you see. It's this weird chicken monster. 
Do any of you act, or do you just watch it for a minute? It's about 30 feet away. Bax is going to take a uh, step backwards away and double check that none of these things are directly behind him. Uh, he has yeah, suspicion. You... Okay. Yeah, you look around and, um, no, no, nothing behind you. Actually, roll me a perception check. You're you're taking a perception. Um, Sutaria, Zwark, you two had weapons. Yes. You want to just watch it for now? Can I shoot the crow? You could. I want to. Uh -oh. I, I want to shoot the crow. I would. I, okay. I will do the. I will do that chicken thingy a favor. Go ahead and make a attack roll. Uh, yeah, you, uh, I think with an 11, let me see. I actually do have a stat block for this creature. Or for the crow, rather. Uh, no, you missed the crow. <laughs> Your arrow Trapped. goes wide. And it goes, ah, and it kind of flutters off, frightened, and goes to fly away. Unless Sotaria or a Frostbite decide to shoot the crow, too. I'm not shooting anything just yet. We don't know what we're dealing with. I err on the side of caution. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, Baxter, with a 12, uh, you do see another couple of them, um, but they are a little bit further away in the forest behind you. I realize their, their stealth is actually not working. Uh, might want to have a bit of a heads up. Looks like we got a few more of them. Seems well, to be the only game in town outside of crows. Well, and actually, as, as you shoot at the crows, Rark, and it flies away, uh, the creature up in the, the tree is goes... <laughs> and makes a horrible screeching sound and looks right at you. It's got these kind of beady black eyes, and it looks like it's pissed that you just scared its crow away. Um, and just kind of hopping around up in the branches. Um kind of screeching and hissing at you uh, and like beating it's holding its wings out to the side uh, in a threatening manner uh, and it, it's trying to like hop from branch to branch and the tree is getting closer but it's not like rushing to you to attack it looks like it's trying to scare you away. I ain't scared of you little chicken uh, and you guys all hear <laughs> more screeches now coming from behind you Baxter or you saw the other couple. Damn it. Did you have to shoot the crow? Oh. Maybe. Maybe I had to. It, it, it's habit. I swear. <sighs> pulls out pulls out a longbow and gets ready for an attack. Just resting here with my shovel. Okay. Um, do you, is there a point at which you shoot at them, Sotaria? Or do you only shoot if they go to like move to attack? If they're moving to attack, then I shoot. I'm not doing it beforehand. Uh, they get to about within 15 feet of you. There are three of them total. Uh, and they're just screeching and holding their wings out and making these awful sounds at you. Um, you can see one of them uh, has what looks like a petrified mouse in its mouth. Uh, or in its beak, really. That's pretty badly chipped and, and damaged. It's like it is a, a solid smack away from just cracking to pieces. But for the most part, they're just, like, threat trying to threaten you, it looks like. Um, but they don't come any closer. Maybe Do you all back off? Or... Well, yeah, we let's... gotta go forward. Yeah, let's keep yeah, moving forward. forward. I ain't scared okay. of no chickens. They continue, like, flapping around, trying to scare you off. Um, but, yeah, you, you get past them without any real issue. Um, and after you know, a, a few minutes, you open up into a, a clearing. They're still following you and, like, screeching at you um, to, like, leave. But they don't attack you at all. Um, and as it this op uh, yeah, as the path in the forest kind of opens up into a bit of a clearing, you see a couple of different things. You see a hobble, like a tiny little hut in the middle of the clearing. Um, hut's maybe 15 feet diameter. It's a very small building. Um, there are a few tables that are set out around the place. Um, there is what looks like a barrel of petrified foxes um, just kind of piled up next to the uh, next to the hovel. And, well, probably most importantly, 
uh, you see a skeleton just kind of standing in the middle of the clearing. Well, that isn't creepy at all! I no. say sarcastically. Oh, boy. And it, it, it's just standing there looking at you. Um, do, you do you all do anything? Baxter starts to approach. Okay. Uh, threateningly or non-threateningly? Non-threateningly shovels over the shoulder. Okay. Yeah, it's going to reach over toward one of the tables and pick up a chair and then walk toward you. And Baxter has had some experience. If you recall, if you recall um, Eliza, the mm -hmm. zombified woman who Baxter has taken in. So dealing with this kind of thing ain't exactly outside of his stretch. He ends up walking towards the skeleton and kind of lowers his head in a respectful nod. So much as the tip of a hat, in fact. Yeah, the skeleton doesn't seem to react too much. You're not sure about how sentient this one might be, um, but it walks over and it holds the chair up. Double or it's right, it puts the chair down for you, rather. Fascinating. Thank you very much, sir. Much obliged. Um, and with complete trust, he sits in the chair. Okay. What about the rest of you? Because Baxter has walked like 30 feet out into this clearing. A skeleton just handed him a chair. The skeleton does not seem to have noticed the rest of you or just doesn't care one or the other. I'm going to walk closer, guess to watch Baxter's back, but I'm not going to sit down if the, if the skeleton decides just to put down a chair for me. It does. As, as soon as you enter the clearing and it seems to notice you, it picks up a chair and brings it over. Baxter, dear. Um, what do you think? Let me uh, put it another way to you. If you ended up having a household servant who was there to greet guests and pull out a chair, you'd be... What? What would be your natural conclusion to think? Fine, you have a point. Does anyone else walk out into the clearing? I do. Okay. Hi, Mr. Hi, Mr. Skelebones. The skeleton brings you a chair. I just sit on it. Frostbite, are you staying in the clearing or are you coming out? Oh, did we lose Frostbite at some point? That would be unfortunate. No, Frostbite's here just to Okay. So we'll assume Frostbite staying in the forest until he says. Um, so at this point, as no one else is coming out of the forest, uh, the skeleton um, stands out in front of all of you uh, and gives you a little bit of a bow, walks back over to the table and picks up a, a small hat, which it kind of poofs out. Uh, and it looks like a worn top hat, picks up a cane and starts to do a little dance dinner and a show seems to be the case oh i know this one <laughs> spooky scary skeletons <laughs> so shivers down my spine <laughs> uh and the skeleton is just kind of dancing around it's very very bizarre um but after a moment the door to the hovel opens and uh you see uh, a man kind of walk out uh he's wearing um simple kind of black uh, tunic or frock um, and short cut blonde hair, um, big old, big old thick glasses. And he looks at you, ah, yes, uh, hello. Um, clickety, stop, stop with the dance. He's a guest, not me. Uh, and the, the figure kind of strides quickly toward you. Yes, hello. Um, what brings you to my part of the forest? You're not the uh, hi there. Uh, is, is that skeleton your friend? Because he he he's kind of funny. Yes, it's, yes, I, I've called him Clickety. Oh. As as an account of the bones, they make the sound. Um, <laughs> are you null? No? Are you, um, you null? No? Uh, yes, I'm null. Perfect. Why did Dominic you know? sent us? Oh, you you yes yes you the the mercenaries. Um, hmm, he kind of like calls off the, the little chickens who've been jumping around. Boys, get down, get down, stop. And they kind of get, you know, 
they stop jumping and kind of screeching at you because they've still been doing that the whole time. And he throws a petrified fox to them and they start to devour it, pecking at it with their beaks. Yes, um, I was hoping y'all could do me a favor. I've just been, you know, I've been out in this, this forest for a while now, just doing my thing, you know, practicing my trade, kind of gestures to the skeleton. Um, and I've run into a problem. There are a bunch of adventurers that keep coming from the town. And rather than clearing out all the other monsters that they're supposed to be clearing out, they just keep coming and breaking my skeletons and wrecking my hovel. Well, to be f- well, to be fair, it's kind of unusual for you to have a bunch of skeleton friends. Mm. To be not, fair, I mean, it depends not on you. your practices. It all exactly. depends on where you're from. I mean, I'm I'm from South Town. I came out here for a simple country life, you know, away from the pollution of the city. And yeah, I think it's perfectly fine for me to have some friendly undead. Well, I think. Well, here's the thing. I. Th- I conclude that these adventurers are obviously mistaking your skeletons for the monsters. No, they, I don't think so. They come out here very intentionally. They kind of laugh about it when they're doing everything, when they're beating... Well, they, they've beaten me up a few times. I had to run away. Um, they seem to just be having a grand old time, saying how much easier this is in hunting the monsters. Wow. Wow. You actually, you actually make me wish I actually did steal something at that funeral. It would appear that you are responsible for the death yes. of a particularly well-known knight. Yes, unfortunately. You see, I got these cockatrice. I uh, just, I was hoping they would do the job. Um, but unfortunately, the adventurers just sneak around them. They're not really, they're, they're not vicious at heart, really. The knight tried to attack them. As I'm sure you saw, they don't actually just attack random people. They're very well trained. I am somewhat fascinated, and perhaps you and I should discuss at a later point in time on how oh. one domesticates such creatures. So what you're I'm talking- sorry, Millie. No, you're fine. I understand your exotricity, sweetie. Now, let's get this straight. You're basically been out <laughs> here minding your own business while you have a very... Adventurers coming here basically uh, harassing uh, you and being bullies? Yeah, that's just about right. I think they don't like me because I have skeletons. Can you believe it? Hmm. Well, well, I guess certain people have have a problem with the undead, I guess, but... It did been so. I mean, so, uh, but, wait, so what do you want us to do about it? I, I don't know. Stop them? I, I don't care, really. I mean, they've, they've beaten me to within an inch of my life once. Um, it's crazy. I just, I saved a few death saving throws and I didn't die. It was, I mean, uh, uh, sorry, this is a bit, maybe I'm getting a little bit too uh, scientific uh, or, or arcane for some of you. Um, it's a term that uh, we necromancers use when people are on the brink of death and, and somehow manage to survive. Um, well, in that <laughs> case, bullies me. They, they tried to kill me. They keep breaking my skeletons. They smash up my hovel and I have to fix it. They come by once a week. It's terrible. Absolutely terrible. When did, they, when did they do to come back? And also, too, have you ever considered about moving maybe to another spot not so close? This is a nice thought. It's really, just... There's a ruin about, you know, 100 yards that way. It kind of points out. It's wonderful during the day. There's just, you know, lots of old skeletons in there from, you know, the people who built the place, you know, eons ago. Don't want to go there at night, though, because there are ghosts. But it's a pretty good spot. Yeah, I'm, I'm really close to the river over there. I just, I shouldn't have to move because I'm being harassed. <sighs> yeah, we should. Yeah, you don't deserve to be bullied. In fact, bullies meet a bigger bully, and then I grit really evilly. Ooh, that's a dark way of thinking about it. I'm not sure I approve of that, but at the same time, just stop them from harassing me, and I'm okay with it, really. Oh, don't worry. I don't really plan on killing. I, I just like I to really, I less. really do feel bad about that night, though. Mm. Do you have a way to undo the petrification, perhaps? Well, the problem with undoing the petrification is then they're in pieces. Well. Yeah, I don't think you can revive, I don't think you can revive a guy in a, in a hundred different pieces of stone. Yes. No, but you can animate them. I'm intrigued. 
Tell me more. Oh, oh dear. While you two are go while you guys are about to do this, I'm about to head back into town and hit the tavern. That's normally where all the adventurers hang out, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, for the most I think so. Um, if you'd like, but I could get I could get Clack out here, and Clickety and Clack could put on a little show. They do a great duo performance. I've been I've been working on it. Well, at this point, uh, do I understand that this entire northern region is something you're pets and your creations patrol oh not really i you see i'm not a really big time necromancer it's just me clickety and clack here and it's really oh i mean i guess that the three cockatrice too but they're fairly new. there were five the other day the knight killed two of them it was kind of tragic actually <clears throat> i'm assuming their corpses are next for animation no the other cockatrice Ooh. killed them and ate them or petrified them and ate them. More Ooh. stupidity, I suppose. Ooh, ooh. I got a plan. I got a plan, guys. I got a plan. Do you have any extra skeletons that aren't animated? La yes, like I was saying, if you were just, you know, a hundred yards that way, there's the old ruin. Uh, and as long as you don't go at night, there are tons of skeletons there. Is it night now? No, it's like the middle of the day. Can you not see? It's very bright. All oh, right, right. Uh, guys, guys. I understand I your little goblin eyes have trouble telling day from night. No. I can see fine, thank you. But anyways, guys, guys, I have a plan. Let's let's set a trap for those bullies. Let's take a couple skeletons and make them look like they're actually animated. Is, I mean, sounds good to me. I'm gonna work on okay. Clicky right. Clack's performance. I want you to consider something. If you do that, what do you think their response is gonna be? They're, gonna, they're gonna. It's simple. They're gonna smash the fake animated, quote unquote, animated skeletons, and then I'm gonna scare them off, and they'll never come back. Unless they like killing goblins. I'm sorry, I shouldn't be chiming in. No. Well, if they want to kill I'll me, be... I'll kill them. No one is killing anyone tonight. I do not have time to fill another quarter. Okay, right. okay, fine, fine. But still, let's do the... I still like the idea of baiting them. And you will. I, and with that, I run off into the fort and I'll run off towards the ruins <laughs> and pointed off to go get, to get a bunch of bones. So Zorak runs off into the forest to get some bones? So, Taria, you went back to the tavern? <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, okay, and the splitting begins. <laughs> Frostbite, you're still here with with, uh, with Baxter. I I'm going to stay with Baxter. <laughs> I mean, this party is split up enough as it is. <laughs> well, before everyone runs off in their various directions, do you guys want to come up with a plan, or are you all just going to do different things and hope it works? So I haven't left it. yet, per se. No, I haven't left yet. I said we okay. should go back. I said I haven't left yet. But, okay. um... I'm in agreement I'm with, on... uh... Zotaria. Yeah. I However, think we should it... go back soon. Go ahead, continue. No, no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I really do think we need to go back to this tavern and, um, see what's going on. I do think that he's being bullied. I mean... He set up a marshmallow. No. Yeah. No. I'm a pretty Not powerful gonna... necromancer, I promise. Yeah. I'm... You and me are. both, brother. I'm sure. I just wheel the undead where they do my bidding. I am a, I'm a commander of legions, I'm sure. Um, now, that being said, I would like to end up getting this out of the story because if they are in fact not doing their job and going after easy pickings then that would explain a lot of problems i'm agreeing with that because I, I really go ahead i i'm agreeing with that because i really think they're guess uh, <clears throat> doing the easy work and getting paid for doing real work uh for not doing real work tell me no do you know of any other monsters in this particular forest? There are tons. 
you know, if you had, um, what, 50, 50, 60 minutes north, you enter the Wyvern territory. It's pretty bad. It's breeding season right now, so they're everywhere. Even the little Wyverns are pretty rough. Um, if you travel yeah. about, you know, half an hour further east, you end up in the giant spider area. It's pretty bad there. Lots of webs, very sticky. Um, in fact, if, uh, like I said, there were ghosts just a hundred meters off at night. And yet, you keep this small part, this little clearing, the trail leading to it, pretty clear with your birds nah, and your bones, don't you? Well, that's just because I scared off some of the natural wildlife. As you can see, this was the area of the forest where the foxes live. And he gestures towards his barrel of petrified foxes. Glorious. But that implies that you can keep this little chunk away from all the big nasties, right? Mm, I mean, like what? Like wyverns? Oh, l like ghosts, uh, wyverns, if cyclopses. Came, yeah, screwed. Well, then you better get practicing now, don't you? Well, that's I mean, why I hired. Pe that's why I hire people. If like a rogue cyclops came down from the mountains, you know, I'd probably hire probably Bartholomew's Adventures again to deal with it. All right, let's deal with this then. Do I have to make a check about these skeletons or no? No, Zark. At this point, you're hauling back like a burlap sack full of skeletons. It looks like um, you. So you, being a consummate treasure hunter, were easily able to find Nal's stash of skeletons that he had kind of backed up in case the skeletons get smashed, because they frequently do. So yeah, you're just coming back with a burlap sack full of bones. <laughs> you're, almost, you're almost back already. It was real easy. Is that what you're oh. saying? Well, I think then, uh, given your talents and what have you, I would like to assist in the matter. Now, that being said, <clears throat> I believe that a, I don't put this, diplomatic solution can be reached by force if necessary. I'm sure Frostbite would have no problems with that. And you've already heard how exciting the goblin is towards this. And I'm sure it can work with some degree of coin. Ain't that right, Sotaria? If I have to... I don't have a lot of coin. I'm not you don't. They hunter. do. He meant me, sweetie. Now, uh, oh, really? But... That's wonderful. Mm. You're gonna just pay them off? No, they're gonna oh. pay you and us. I don't understand how you're gonna make this work, but I'm very interested to find out. Wow. You can sit there and be puffy. All right. Uh, well, I'll get I'll get to get the skeletons back to to practice. We're trying to we want to put on a show in the the big thoroughfare that goes through South Town. I don't know if you've been down there. The big the large Broadway that goes right through. Very very uh, nice. Yes. Well, time to head back to town. And uh, as you as you all kind of make your way back to town, and Zrark, you have your bag of skeletons still with you. Yeah, um, and, and I and I probably noticed them leaving, and I'm like, oh. Okay, then. Nal looks like he's getting the skeletons to, like, dance in coordinated way. Well, I'm gonna s I'm gonna try to set up the skeletons so they look like they're animated. Well, like, do you want to go back to town with everyone else first? Or do you want to do this while they're all gone? Well, if I... Well, my problem is, if I go back there and, th and things get bad, they might... They might come here to... And I won't have time to prepare. Well, he tell so Nal is able to tell you, right, that they come every uh, every like seventh day at nightfall, um, hmm. which is still a few hours off. You still got a good four hours probably until it starts to even get dark here, and it's about a forty-five minute walk to town. So, well, you know what? Be okay. uh, well, now that you say that, then um, I just drop the bag and <laughs> I'm just gonna be like, "Hey, wait for me, guys!" Don't drop the remains. Wait, 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 don't. Ooh, wait. yes, bad form, poor form. Okay, fine. I run back and go get him, grab him with me. The, the... I'm better. Just gotta be gentle with them. See, a man of respect and taste. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I, I'm my bad, my bad. <laughs> so, Throck, you're just going to carry this sack with you? As long yeah. as you don't open it up, it shouldn't cause any problems. But if you just open yep. it up in the middle of town, you figure the peasantry would freak out. Yep, um, I'm going to keep this nice and sealed. No one's going to notice a thing. <laughs> so, you all leave Null uh, and are easily able to kind of return back to town. Uh, it's still a beautiful sunny day. Uh, as you're traveling through the forest, and maybe you're being a little more attentive to what else you see, you can see that off in the way, in the far distance on either side of the trail, there are definitely like obvious territory for certain creatures. Um, you notice like the signs of, oh, there are bear markings if you look, you know, a couple hundred feet off the trail that way or things like that. Um, so yeah, it looks like certain areas of this forest are very much distinct in their wild. Very bizarre. But you're back in the town, no problem. Uh, you want to head to the the big there's a big adventuring tavern called uh, called the, what I call it the Leaky Bucket. Exactly where I want to head to. Sure. So yeah, you you go in no problem. Um, there are uh, a ton of adventuring looking folk here. Uh, they're drinking, being merry, having a good time. Um, and yeah, you want to you do anything in particular? Or? Yeah, I'm looking for a large group of these uh, wonderful Monaghan knights. They especially if any of them seem to be drinking with the cap. Yeah, you actually don't see any of the Montague's knights here. Um, you see more like standard adventuring party looking people here. There's a big old signboard kind of on the wall that has Who's um, the leader of the guild? That's who I'm looking for. Um, which if guild? there is one. Or the knights maybe, you mean? Yeah, um, I think just from talking a, a little bit, like talking around, um, these are all freelance adventuring. There's no adventuring guild proper here. Uh, hmm. What I, could I could I find any knights? Could I find out where the knights are if I could look somewhere outside? Yeah, I mean you could find the knights easily enough. They're around. They're like the police. Uh, would it be hard for me to get their one of them's attention? No. I'm gonna just look over and I'm like, hey, hey you! Ah, a goblin. He draws his sword. Oh, back oh, goblin. Up. Oh, come on. I'm not that bad. I just want to talk to you, buddy. He looks aghast. You speak as he takes off his helmet and kind of holds under one arm and sheets his sword. I mean, of course I speak. You think all goblins are stupid? I apologize for a goblin. We are used to the creatures from the caverns in the north. Ah. Oh, well. Who you are you? You could call me Zrark. What can I do for you, Zrar? Oh, well... He looks at you suspiciously. Well, you see, me and my friends were hired to help someone out in the forest, and he seems to be having some troubles. Do you think we... Do you think you know? You could tell me where the captain is? Or whoever ah, leads the Zrar? vile necromancer, no doubt. Oh, I see how it is. Well, it's at this point, Baxter. It's a <laughs> yeah, yeah, stepping forward, yeah, just behind there. Zarak, and kind of mm -hmm. nudges him forward, like, "Don't stop now." <laughs> you work for the necromancer, and he goes to like put the hand on, put a hand on the, his blade again. Nah, I don't work for the necromancer. They, uh, he, he just hired us. Good. Some of the adventurers in the tavern from the the Broad Horizons group. They were talking about how he was the one responsible for the killing of our brethren. Well, he said that you guys harass him every, every week. He eyes you like, the knights rarely travel into the forest. I'm and afraid you may do. mistake it. Well, your petrified buddy tells us something otherwise. He gives you a glare. Now, you speak ill of my comrade. Not at all. I state fact. So here's the facts. You see, this little guy here, 
is the most dangerous thing in this entire village. He kind of places a hand on Zrak's shoulder. And he's just itching at this point to go off. He has this uh, tendency, you see, to collect trophies. And I've been trying to talk him out of it. Zork, are you doing anything as he's monologuing this? Or are you just letting it go? No, I'm gonna no, I'm totally gonna play along with Baxter's oh, okay. little play here. It's like, yes, I love trophies. I surely love trophies, <laughs> but I'm not that bad of a person, I swear. I'm sorry, go on, uh, go on, Baxter. No, 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 it's okay. I just wanted to understand how this was playing out in <laughs> You see. Now we were here to settle a problem. You don't want your people dying. And that great and powerful necromancer you're so worried about, the one that you keep busting into his awful week after week, um, really wants nothing to do with you guys. He's, now... He looks at you confused. Hold up, I know where the confusion lies. Here's the problem. See, he just has this little neck of the woods. He wants to be left alone. Now, you want to end up being far more effective as patrols, correct? You want to know when it is that th trouble happens. Well, it seems like him and his little group of chickens uh, got that place pretty much on lock for the past little while. And given on how you responded to my friend here, the merciless pirate lord Zarak and Thrax, well, I can only imagine what he is warding off. See, it's not a matter of what he is. It's more of a matter of what he's keeping out. Do you uh, understand me? At this point, the knight, like, has drawn his sword and says, You threaten the people of Montag. No. <laughs> I'm trying to... Hit... I am expressing... Oh, go ahead. Hold on there. Excuse, I'm just I like, I'm just gonna look at the card, even though I'm terrible at, chariz charisma at charismatic things, and I'm like, sure. listen here, guard, I may be a pirate lord, but I have standards. Do you think I'd go around looting entire towns just for the hell of it? No! I only do things to, to people that absolutely deserve it because they're ungrateful pieces of shit. But I, but you know, but... To me, I think you got everything misunderstood. And besides, have you ever seen a skeleton dance? The knight looks at you just still. He, his face has gone from like confused to angry to confused again a couple times in the conversation. He says, yeah. I, I'm, I am afraid um, you may have us mistaken if you're truly men of standard. He kind of eyes you, Zarar. Uh, then you would know our only goal is to protect the people of the city. And your current want to exercise him is in direct violation of that. Uh, I'll just take a quick side trip here. So, so Taria and Frostbite, are you two still in the tavern? Uh. Uh, or, so Taria, are you, are you, are you, okay. We'll get to the tower in a minute then. Yeah. Uh, Frostbite, are, where are you? Are you with them outside or are you also in the tower? I'm probably in the tavern. So Frostbite, you and Sacharia have been in the tavern, um, just kind of listening in. And there's one company of adventurers that are kind of sitting in the corner and they're talking big game. And there are a couple other people listening and there's some dice being thrown and all sorts of stuff. But yeah, it's just this, um, this elf with a bow. Uh, a half elf with a, a loot, um, a knight, but not one of the Montagues knights. They're just wearing normal plate armor, uh, and what looks like a, a priest to some deity. Uh, and that priest is rolling in cash, and they're like, ha, uh, "It's I have incredible." A about the we, priest. Can I do I sure? recognize what deity he's wearing? Perhaps. Perhaps. You can only a religion check. All right, uh, but they are draped in gold and finery. They're very well dressed. Uh, religion. Uh, they worship the god of money. Uh, which, you don't know what they call it in this region? Um, uh, in certain places they call them Joaquin, in other places they call them other names. 
Uh, there's a, there are gnomes in a small region that believe Bartholomew is that. Um, but <laughs> of course, of course, there's a uh... gnomes. But yeah, they're talking big game. This adventuring company. They're talking about how they convinced the town guard that uh, there is there's a lich in the forest that they keep killing, but it keeps coming back because of its phylactery. And they're so, they're raking so in the Taria cash. Is grin- so Taria is grinning from ear to ear. She sees every now that she's finally got the whole story. She sees mm-hmm. the problem. So she decides to go Santo over to the lead bandit in charge. Sure, uh, it appears to be the priest. Uh, and then the priest is like, yes, it's crazy. We're grinding XP like no one's business. In a few months, we're going to be strong enough to fight the wyvern. Oh, really? What was it with oh. that thing? Why, hello there, miss. The priest just kind of looks at you. Please, would you like to sit down and play a game of dice with us? Oh, I would love to sit down and play a game of dice. <laughs> Sits on his lap. <clears throat> yeah, let me let me move my pile of gold coins out of your way so you have some room. And he ships a huge pile of gold coins off. A couple like spill off onto the floor. He doesn't go to pick them up. Seemingly, it's just a, a power move. My, you sure ah. are well. My, Who's you sure you are well endowed. Oh, he's a friend of mine. See, we're adventurers. We just got here. We're really well, low level. Uh, well, I'll she, tell she, you. She, she, she gets she gets frostbite this look of shut up don't say a word I know how powerful you are let me work <laughs> so, so you've heard, frostbite you've heard of Montag's says, unique I'm level Freud system Land. of how of rating says in like broken I am from Freud Land. Uh, ah. <laughs> yes you look very strange with your many legs and uh, are they legs or arms they are arms well anyhow yeah, well, welcome back. Uh, welcome to Montag. It's a, a land of plenty, really. But stay out of, uh, stay out of um, this area. And he kind of points up to the signboard that's nearby. It's got like an area picture of the forest. Just stay out of this part of the forest. It's ours. And oh, he's pointing really? right to like the rough area of the map where you think the necromancer. Oh. So, so what's so special about that area, huh? That's our territory. You own forests? No, it's just where we go. <laughs> oh, so I can enter an area. No. Look, you have to understand how things work around here if you're new. That's our turf. We understand that it's your turf, but we want to know what makes that area so special. I mean, come on. You can tell me, right? Are you trying to... Are you trying to... All right. Can you roll me yes. a persuasion <laughs> check? Bat those eyelids. And as you're doing that, uh, Baxter and Zorark, the confused knight looks to you again. I, uh, I believe you misunderstand. Um, the Broad Horizons Adventuring Company has been the ones dealing with the forest recently. Oh, well. Yes, we, as I said, we generally stick to the roads and to policing. Oh, well, in that case, um, uh, I'm deeply sorry for the confusion. I don't want to bother you. In fact, right. I would argue then, if you do end up sticking to the roads, then perhaps you've mentioned something about a vile necromancer. You Yes, apparently it's created a phylactery and keeps returning. I assure you it's no necromancer. In fact, more accurately, it's um it's a donut with parlor tricks <laughs> excuse me hard <laughs> cut back to the tavern yeah i know it's crazy so we we've been here for a couple months now we're already level well what are we guys level three and one of the other guys goes <laughs> you're still level two uh yeah whatever we're like we're doing pretty well for ourselves we carved out a little area of the forest First, we fought some owl bears. The giant spiders were rough. We lost our barbarian. Uh, and, you know, we found this one little area which is, I'll be honest, he's kind of a wimp. Necromancer lives. We just keep going and messing up his skeletons every week. It's great. They pay us per skull we bring back, which he's got a pile of skulls in his hovel. We just take them all. At this point, I want to walk That's in. So you I not walk in well, Just this. a second, Zark. Just a second. This is them. They get a turn. 
Sorry, you were saying frostbite? So, what you're saying is you've not very strong adventure. <laughs> well, we're, gri we're grinding XP and gold! Look at all our gold! I oh, might yeah. not be very strong adventurer, but I am... But I am pretty sure I am above level 2. He kind of scoffs. Yeah, well, I don't, I don't give a damn who you are. Really? But she, but, but yeah. she basically gives Frostbite this look of shut up. Um, cause, cause she's, cause she's really annoyed by now. <laughs> by the way, all while this is going on, she has been picking his pocket. <laughs> oh, God. All right, can you roll me a sleight of hand check? Uh, and actually, there is a DC where you can get something really good out of it. But that DC is a DC 20. Oh, come uh, on. Yeah. But wait, no I, did, I did also wait, wait, wait. I did roll. I did roll an eighteen on persuasion, though. Come on, now you gotta give me something. <laughs> um, he's a what are, what, What's frostbite doing? Frostbite is, pop, is ignoring her, like slash distracting, trying to piss off the. Uh, You're just trying to piss him off, just agitate him. Yeah. Fine, keep agitating them. Let me make you can't be that strong. I mean, <laughs> if you have to steal skulls just to get paid, you can't be that strong. All right, Frostbite, can you roll me a... I don't know, what do we call this? An intimidation, intimidation. check? I think, yeah. I think I'm intimidating. You're trying to piss him off. I'm going to go with that. And if, if, you, if you get above, we'll say, a 12, we'll give Satari advantage on here, and then something else will also happen. All right. Okay. So you're you're yes, this guy, yes, and yes. you can see he's getting like a little red in the face. And so, Chara, you're reaching around and you feel something. You're like, "All right, coins. That's nice coins. That's nice." Coins. <laughs> oh, this thing's big. You grab it. You pull it out, uh, and it appears to be a um, a gold pile of coins that are like kind of melded as one thing, uh, and it has a, a a platinum chain around it. And you get this is probably his holy symbol. Um. <laughs> But so you do that at this point, Zrark, you and and Baxter, are you two making your way back to the tavern, having kind of found out yep. your So at this point you two walk in. So Zrark, you were saying? Yeah, I'm just gonna walk in hearing everything that was said earlier and I'm just looking looking and I, and also I'm holding this bat this big bag, but no one knows it's it, what's <laughs> no one in knows it. it's might... a bag of bones. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. yeah but... But, but I look, I look at those adventures, well, approach those adventures, and be like, "Hey there!" Ignore the, them. They are not strong. They are. The the uh. The... Now, frostbite, be nice. Uh, this is the rest of our companions. We're just, we're we've just been trying to get the info about what's going on around here, and I think these guys are so great. The priest is like, yeah, you know, you, you seem pretty great yourself. You know, we could probably use another archer, or maybe we could replace Jed over there. And the archer's like, hey, hey, don't mind me. I'm the old useless man here. Yeah. You know, the kids just drag me around, gotta carry in this shovel. <laughs> the the, uh, the the bard looks at you and says, oh yeah, what do you? Uh, where's your walker, Gramps? Uh, can you roll me a wisdom saving throw? Wow! Um, Burn. You wanna know what? Sure, why not? <laughs> it's a DC 12. All right, you take three psychic damage and have disadvantage on your next attack as he vicious mockeries you. <laughs> Sick burns! I'm sorry, but that was too fun. No, it's quite all right. So you just, ah, oh, you just get like a bloody nose and you're like, what? And you know, he just, uh, he just subtly attacked you in a way that wouldn't draw direct attention. You know what? I've been I've been told that there's apparently some grand archlich and that well, I have to thank some adventurers that are very, very good at what they do. Uh, so you guys must be absolutely astronomical. I mean, I would have thought I would have ended up seeing you at Bartholomew's shop like a thousand times by now. They kind of look at each other and uh, the knight who's kind of been sitting back in the corner half paying attention looks up, uh, kind of wait, almost seems like they wake up and you just hear muffled through their mask. Who is Bartholomew? Also, why are there goblins here? 
We graduated from killing those two months ago. Uh, I'm an adventurer. Thank you very much. Guys, guys. You've yes, never... And you're, I'm... you're very low-level adventurers compared to these guys, remember? <clears throat> huh, and I'm master of the city watch. <laughs> he, he laughs, mocking you, but does not do psychic damage because he's a knight. Wow. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Now, I, I suppose then we should uh, tally on because clearly these individuals have great work ahead of them. The night I suppose. Yeah. Team, I think we need to get out of here. Can you all get out of our way? We have a job to do. Oh, sure. We'll probably meet up very soon. All right. The bar, yeah. like, not the bar, the, the cleric looks at you, Sajaria, the one you've been flirting with, he's like, look, you're nice and all, but don't get in our way out there. Wouldn't dream of it. I wasn't talking to you, Grandpa. <laughs> uh, he pushes his way past you rudely. His belt jingling with, with, uh, with pouches of gold. I'm, 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 gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at, I'm gonna huddle up the other guys and just like try to whisper and be like, so, uh, do we do the big plan now? Oh no, <laughs> we're just gonna kick their asses. Oh, I like that, I like that idea even better. <laughs> I am a gramps and I'm digging a hole. <laughs> digging, <laughs> digging a hole. <laughs> it, it, he starts on, walking out the door with his shovel. Before the, <laughs> the other group of adventurers walks out, the, I want to know, is there any, like, wet spot on the floor or anything? No. Uh -oh. They didn't seem very intimidated. They were just kind of annoyed. No, no, no. Oh, no. I mean, like, I, like, you know, like, spill, spill beer from, my like, just in general. Just in general. Sure, or, yeah. Totally. I'm going to my, uh, oh, shape water cantrip. Okay. To move the water uh -huh. to like in front of the door and then freeze it. Oh, okay. Uh, so there's like a wet pa patch of ice. So there's I mean, just a patch of ice. Like I'd in roll, the but the knight absolutely slips on it. Ah! And he falls <laughs> on his ass. Huh. Need to walk barkeep. barkeep, you're going to need to clean this ice. Why is there ice here? And he just walks away. <laughs> but he is humiliated for a moment. Uh, so I, forward I, just I'm, a moment. I'm gonna let out a little cardi goblin chuckle. <laughs> well, fast forward a moment. They leave. They exit the tavern, and presumably you all. Oh yeah. Um, the uh, question is, how far do you tail them? Do you like, once you're out of the city, do you stay close enough that they know you're tailing them, or do you give them a lot of birth? Actually, I have a better idea. Um. Could I try to stealth my way so that I end up going ahead of them, actually? Yeah, do that. absolutely. So do that, you, you do that, do that. Yeah, do you that. get to the forest, do, no problem. Do I, do I make a stealth check to go around them and to get in front? Well, I was saying, you guys have some time walking the forest and following them to, like, plan. Do you guys have a plan, or are you? what's your move, is what I'm asking. Uh, I'm we gonna... can roll everything after your plan's decided. Okay, well, to, follow them, got to follow them, I'm going to say with it, like, far, like, 50 feet behind them while wearing my blindfold. Because okay, I, so you're just relying on the a, darkness? Yeah, well, yeah, because uh, my blindfold gives me blind vision out to 60 feet, which means as long as I'm, so as long as I'm following 50 feet behind them, I should mm -hmm. still be able to see them. Yep. I have so. an idea. Make, I have an idea. I'm just gonna look to, to um, yeah. I'm gonna look to S Sotaria and be like, maybe we can. I think I can scare them off. Why don't we scare? Why don't we sneak around front and and ambush them? Ambush? Yes. Scare? No. I want to. I really, 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 really want to kill them. Um, well, but we first can't off, go... one more well... thing. Bitch, the bones. The fat guy is loaded. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Hand them over. I had whatever. Gift. The bones. D ditch the bones. Uh, Go put them. Okay. I'll just give him the bag of bones. Uh, no. D yeah, ditch the bones. Femur, we need that sack because the guy has sacks and stacks of gold. 
We can oh, use the bones to scare them. Yes, well, that's what I was trying to do. I, I'm scared. I'll intimidate them with well, my... Well, what? Well, so, not, so I think I not... think the idea, right? And just to clarify, Zork, I'm just going to start walking front. past with the skeletons. Yeah. So, Zork, you want to sneak around to the front and startle them with the skeletons, so that then, you guys can get like a surprise then, round on them because they're away. And then when they're they like, try, and then when they try to run, they turn around and see the other two guys. Okay, so you guys uh, want to flank them, basic. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Fine. As long as we kill them, because they're annoying, and they kind of need to die. So, Baxter, are you moving along with um, Frostbite, or are you going to try and do something different? I'm going to end up taking those bones, and uh, we need the sack for the gold, right? Well, so, I, uh, wait, let's carry wait, it. hold up. I got to use the bones, though. There's oh, tons of bones. Don't yeah. worry. Don't worry. I just figure I use what's on hand, and I kind of place my hand on the now properly done, and it just stands out of the bag. All right, you have a ske a real skeleton now. I'm gonna take some extra bones with me and just go on my merry way instead with the stealth plan. Zark, before you leave, I'm going to give you some webbing so that way you can for it just in case you need it. So you oh, can and... place the webbing around and stick the bones to it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So you can use the webbing to, like, stick the skeletons together and make them yeah. all go. Just to be clear, this has been enough time to constitute as a short rest. We really haven't been stressed yeah, too absolutely, much. Absolutely. Correct? All yeah. right. All right. So I only have one spell slot spent. So uh, as you go out into force, the first thing I need to have happen... Zark, I this is a two-part thing out of you, because you're the one doing the solo mission. I need you to make a stealth check. Yep. I'm on it. Okay. Okay. Uh, look at their stuff here. Uh, you do have some boat. You have a plus five because it's dark and they don't have dark vision. None of them oh, do. Oh, so that would be... So that would be a... Oh, well, actually, one of them would. By the elf. Well, so that would be, like, what? A 17... Or 18? That'd be an 18. Yeah, 18. An 18, okay. So it looks like none of them actually see you. Even that priest doesn't notice you. Uh, as you're sneaking on ahead, um, next, can you roll? Uh, what are you going to roll to put the skeletons up? I guess a performance check to startle them with that? I'll actually, um, I can just say you can do it because they're not expecting that. So you yeah. tie up the webs, you rope some skeletons up so it looks like there are fake animated skeletons. And um, there's a point where they're just walking around, they're like, ugh, can't we do this during the day? And the knight's like, no, we must. We have to go at night. Otherwise, people will follow us. Some of the other adventurers will catch on. And by the time... We gotta keep and this going as long then... as possible. Ah! And he gets tangled up in the webs, and there's the skeleton next to him. He's like, oh, shit! Uh, and then, and then nearby, I approach them like fools. And from the darkness, Zurak, you exit from the shadows. Sataria, so, you uh, actually, everyone is there. Do you all roll me initiative, and then we can start the fight? You guys get a drop on me at one surprise round, and then the game begins. We'll see how easily wow. or difficultly you guys deal with them. Okay, so, oh, Baxter, nice. Can you make your me skeleton... laugh? Absolutely, sure. Your skeleton will just go with you, uh, Baxter. That Not a problem. Easy. Um, okay, so, Baxter, you're first to go on the surprise round. What would you like to do as you hear the knight get tangled up in the webbing and startled by the skeleton? Or, I'm sorry, the, the not your skeleton, the others. Yeah. Um... Now, he's he's stuck. Do I understand this correctly? Yes. Uh, he currently... I'd give him probably disadvantage on, like, deck save. I'll give him... Uh, I don't know what the condition is. I'd have to look at it. I think it's restrained. Yeah, restrained makes sense. Um, now there's a cleric, a fighter... What else? Uh, a cleric, a fighter, an archer, and a bard, it looked like. The se self-proclaimed, of course. They could be liars. You know... I think this will be f I'm going to end up having the 
Artra at this point. Okay. Roll a constitution save. Ooh, that's going to be a bad one for them if they fail. Uh, the archer rolls a constitution save. Not bad at it. Oh, but not good enough, probably, huh? No. He's blind. <laughs> Just, ah! <laughs> yell out in agony. Yeah. You see, that's what happens when you deal with a real necromancer. All and... right. At this point, um, just to take a shot, well, the he's blind, so he can't dodge. Uh, we are going to end up rolling with the Keep in mind, that is a, your action to cast Blindness Definite. Yeah, oh, but bonus action. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and actually, you have advantage on that, so you can roll just if you crit. Uh, if your skeleton takes a shot with a short and crits. Uh, so we're going to take the eight damage Miss off call, the first Jeremy. one and Miss the six call. crit damage on the second, so... Bada boom, 14 points of damage on that archer. I mean, hey, you gotta you gotta give it where it gets. Uh the the archer gets shot with an arrow, goes, ah uh, is in a lot of pain. There's I'm big on irony. <laughs> Lol. Um is that the end of your turn, Baxter? Are you staying back or I'm staying back and I'm keeping an eye on the bard. Okay. Um, so that is... Oh, they have light, by the way, so they're emitting plenty of light. You can see them very well. Um, uh, but, but the bard would go, but a surprise round. Archer would go, but surprise round. Frostbite, your move. All Max right. just made first blood upon the archer. Uh, now, are they all grouped together? Uh, yeah, they're pretty grouped together. Alright, I'm going to... Use the snow swarm. Yeah, I mean, you'd hit them all with that. They're not grouped to dodge spells. Oh, <laughs> shit. Good one. All right. Um, let me go for the knight first. Nope. That's That's a, a really... disadvantage. Uh, yeah, he, he fails 11. Oh, jeez. Come on, guys. Uh, man, even the, I didn't even roll the right one for the bard, but he still fails. <clears throat> and the archer would succeed but can't see so gets a five instead all right you nail all of them for 18 cold damage uh they go ah as they get pelted with snowballs as they get pelted with snowballs um what's the ah. matter i thought you were strong adventure <laughs> Uh, Zora, Guys, you know, remember, we don't want Finally, we get my... one of them alive so they can confess to everyone what they've been doing Okay. Sataria yells out. I don't know, Chad gonna... wants you to kill them all. Okay, but, um, yeah, I figured. But, um, anyway, I'm going to look at the knight and be like, so, you like killing goblins, huh? And then I'm just going to... I love he's... killing goblins. I can't see a thing. Well, I'm glad you can't see... Because I'm going to make you show no true fear now. And then I cast Hunter's Mark on... Okay. And then He's marked. And then I'm going to and then I'm pull out my my short bow. Keep in mind it is also made of bones. And I'm now well, going to shoot him with nice. that. It, I'm okay. going to shoot him in the thigh. You have advantage cuz he's currently tied up in webs. All right. That'll hit. Go ahead and give me your damage. I have to get uh, my bonus damage as well. Don't forget Hunter's mark. Yep. I, if right. I believe it's like a one. Yeah, it's a one d six. Extra d six. Yep. A pretty solid hit. Nice. Um, the total of fifteen extra damage. All right, he is. Uh, you shot him again. He's ah, and he looks harmed. None, none of them are bloody yet, but they're they're hurt. Is there anything else you'd like to do, Zor? Nah, I'm just gonna keep torturing this poor soul. Jesus, that would All be right. great. <laughs> Except uh, we don't have that kind of time. I think I'll just end this now. Well, so, Charya, it's your move. Oh, uh, right. I'm with. I'm with. Uh, I'm. I'm with Baxter. We don't have time for all that, and we only need one of them alive to really guess confess their crimes. After all, so uh, <clears throat> uh -huh. uh, we're going to guess play. We're just going to guess deal with it. Short sword. Short sword one. 
Oh, so you run up and go to stab. Who are you stabbing uh-huh. at? The archer, uh-huh. the bard, the knight, or the priest? The knight and the archer seem kind of compromised right now, and you'd have an advantage if you attack. Mm, let's go with the bard. Okay. Uh, so you roll a 10. The 10, unfortunately, doesn't quite connect. But that just said he, uh, that just said the bard and the archer were compromised. No, the, so the knight, knight and, the archer. and the archer. Oh, my bad. Okay. Did you want to go for someone else then, in knowing that? Yeah, I'll go, go in the knight. Go in the knight. Okay. It'll still miss, uh, but because that's a 15, which uh-huh. is not enough to beat his plate armor. Dang it. Oh, well. Yeah. Still Fine uh, You want to take your, your offhand stab? Since you're using yeah, the short sword, you be... can two hand. Yep, I'm going to do it offhand, and there that we go. That will hit. All right, go ahead and give me your damage. Uh, keep uh, in mind, wait a minute. Is... How clo- is, is any of my nice little, um, or oh, is the... any of my nice little party near me? Uh, your party? No, unfortunately, um, no. But all, she I does have advantage. advantage. Yep, you, you no, have yeah, advantage. I do, I do have advantage, but I was trying to get my sneak attack in. You that lets attack you get your you sneak attack, advantage. because yeah. you have advantage. Oh, okay, so in that case, five, and that was, that's a 14. And, and this is against the knight? Yep. All right, uh, so it's another 14 damage. All right, he is now bloodied, uh, as he has been shot a couple of times and stabbed pretty badly in the back. He's injured. Pretty, yeah, he's definitely yeah. in. Uh, okay. And it backs his turn. Um, they're still grouped. They haven't had a chance to move out of the way. And you said that the blast hit them all, right? Yeah. No, Satari is also up there with them. So just keep that. Don't in worry mind, about it. But I'm not. Don't worry about it. You're just gonna cast sleep. Oh shit. Okay. Oh shit. That, that no, it goes how from the lowest hit points. You haven't been injured. How much health oh. do you have, Satari? 26. You have 26? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it starts with the lowest hit point. So all right. the, priest, the, the priest or... actually falls asleep. <laughs> the, the priest <laughs> snoozes. Um, the mm-hmm. bard also, and that's uh, how much? 53. The bard also falls asleep. And that is it. The archer and knights are just barely above. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. The archer should fall asleep, not the not the bard. Oh, well, yep. if that's the case, um, let's have the knight. Or let's have the bard take a. Sh- All right, take a shot at the bard for four. Yep. Uh, yep. He gets shot against. Ah! He's not not happy. And I'm going to move in the way of the bard with the shovel. It's oh, sand. you just get right up in there? Oh, Grandpa's got to get himself some. And more importantly, I'm going to make sure that he doesn't wake up his buddies. Yeah, so you just get right up in his grill. Um, all right, he's going to go then after you. And he is going to say, uh, Grandpa should get with the fucking times, man. And he's going to strum his loot and go, BAM! And there's a big thunder wave uh, that blasts out to you and Sotaria. So, oh, no. shit. Yeah, you just counterspell him. It, and he goes, fuck. <laughs> all, all Grandpa things. came to get him some. Uh, and then he will, uh, what else will he do? Okay. Uh, then he will say, well, Grandpa's still old. Uh, and he's going to use his taunt feature. So I need you to roll a charisma saving throw. Uh-oh. Uh, you succeed. This <laughs> DC 12. Uh, so he tries to taunt you, which would have rattled you and distracted you from pretty much everything. But it doesn't matter. He, You are able to overlook him. Uh, the archer's going to go. The archer's asleep. Uh, so Frostbite, it's your move. You guys just annihilated these boys. Well, we'll see, actually. Frostbite? Sorry. Uh, okay. So the bard and the knight are still left. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm going to... Let's see. Wait, what about the archer? Archer's asleep. He fell asleep oh. from the seat. Yeah, I'm just... He's mine. <laughs> I... Something... 
Fight. Do, 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 do. I mean. Okay, I am going to cast Magic Missile at level two. At whom? Uh. You know what? How about the knight? Since sure. I think Baxter wants to take care of the bar. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the knight's got some serious armor. Oh, by all means, go, go nuts. I, I just want the sleepers. Uh, okay, then I'm going to have Okay. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, note the extra cold damage, the, only, the extra D4 should only apply to the full thing. Um, that's fine, though. You actually still kill him. All right. Uh, actually, I think, let me see. Four, uh. seven... Oh, I was Eight, gonna. Nine, ma- oh man, why'd you have to kill him? Yeah, yeah he uh, collapses in a bloody mess. Is there anything else you'd like to do? Uh, no. All right, uh, Zorak, it's your turn. There's a sleeping archer, a sleeping priest, and the knight. Note that if you hit a sleeping creature, it is a critical hit because they're Wait, incapacitated. Did you, just, did you say the knight's dead, or is he? No, he's fine. He's just—he's the one still standing. Oh, I thought you said he died. No, but he's barely standing. It's the bard that died, or the bard died. Die. Oh. Yes, the bard is dead. The bard well, has been just just trying to knock at Baxter the whole time. Well, I'm gonna do something a little creative. I want to torture him a little bit. Uh, can I remove his helmet while he's stuck in there? Uh, no, I don't think he can. Well, rip. Well, I'm gonna. Well, I just wanted to have. I'm just gonna. Pull, I'm just gonna take my short swords, and make sure he feels it right up his neck, and tell him, "Beg for mercy. Your friends are done for." Beg I can't for see me. anything in here. What's on me? Is it a roach? Is there a cockroach on me? No, it's my sword. And if you want to live, you best take you off the. You call that a sword? I I am telling you to look me in the eye. Take that damn helmet off and look me in the eyes. Can you roll an intimidation check? Can I roll? Oh, okay. I mean, unless you're attacking. Uh, no. Okay. Uh, he I'm goes, swinging nine. Nine yeah, doesn't do it. It kind of... Uh, no, it's a, it's a, I'd give you an advantage on this. Okay. Uh, your dagger kind of like... Or your short sword nicks his neck. And, oh, shit. Wait, that's actually sharp. Well, let's hold up a minute. Wait a minute. Maybe we can talk this out. What's going on? Are you bandits? No. Um, no, we're just those pesky little adventures from earlier. You know that one? You, you remember the one and you called the little goblin at the tavern? I didn't really like that snarky comedy of yours. Nor do I like it when you harass other wimps. So I'm going to make you taste true fear today. The knight says on his turn, which follows yours, Ha! Joke's on you. I have advantage on saving throws against being frightened. And I hate goblins. Uh, and he's going to swing his great sword at you. He just takes it off his back, tears himself out from the webs, and swings it. Uh, what's your armor class? 16. All right, it's one. Two, who? Three. All right, he misses you twice. Oh, yeah, the only one that hits me is the 24, sadly. He goes, die, goblin! And that's, uh, that's his turn. Satari, yeah. your turn. Sataria? Sataria! Sotoria! Mistra! We'll get back to You are muted. Um, alright, so... Mistra, you we'll are just go to, We'll just we go to Baxter until Sotoria gets back. Um, yeah. Baxter? Well... Two of them are asleep. That was a really so, high sleep one. Holy oh, crap. Yeah. Um, I think this is about the time I... Yeah, let's uh let's go to near yeah, chill time. Okay. You're going at the what? Uh, I'm rolling at the uh at night that is currently having some issues. Okay. Um yeah, unfortunately that will not connect with him. He is he is tough as nails. He's currently not webbed up. But that being said, it doesn't matter he's tough as nails if he gets shot in the back with a short bow. <laughs> so, alright, he is looking pretty hurt. Is there anything else you'd like to do? Uh, on my action, I am going to uh, start grabbing out some rope. I got some plans for some sleeping beauties. All right. Uh, Frostbite. 
The archer's asleep. The priest is asleep. The knight is swinging his greatsword, trying to kill Zorark. All right. Uh, let's see. What shall I do next? Uh, well, you might want to knock him out since he might need to confess. Yeah. Well, we already have two of them knocked out. We only, <laughs> hey, that's what you think. One. Come on, kid. Come on, people. I want to make him suffer. Uh, how about... Okay. Ooh, which one of these makes him have disadvantage on attack? I don't know why I'm playing this evil meat, this triumphant ah. This is very evil. It's, it's, well, tri it's triumphant in my book. They attack our friend. They, atta they attack our friend. That's very so true. He was evil. He might be a necromancer, but that doesn't make him evil. Sure. Uh. So yeah, I am going to use frostbite on the knight. Sure. Go ahead and make your attack, or please get a roll save. That is a. He's pretty good at constitution. Yep. Nope. Uh. Zorark. The knight did he, not subdue. He He's right up in my face, isn't he? Yeah, he's a dick. Mm. Well, I'm just gonna ha I'm just gonna, since I still have my Hunter's Mark and I'm my bo next bonus action is Slayer's Prey, so now I have 2d6 when I hit. So Go ahead and I, make your attack. Yeah, I'm, can I attack? I wanna, uh, yeah, I'm going to use my short swords this time. My No, I'm gonna use my cutlasses this time. Yes, it's slashy, slashy. All right, go ahead and make your deck. I mean, he's okay. the only combatant really left. The other two are out for a minute. You can kill this guy. Nope. 12 won't do it. That will. He... Oh, all right. Yeah, you swing with your second cutlass. This is why you, sim why you dual scimitars. All right, yes, go ahead and do I your do. damage. And Four. I roll 2d6. That's true. One for Hunter's Mark, one for Slave's Prey. Another seven. All right, he's looking really bad. You might want to rethink your options, last chance, buddy. Uh, he says, no, this is my last chance. One more goblin and I level up. Uh, and he's going to make an attack against you, Zerark. He swings, swings, and swings again. The, that hit me. 18 points hit. of damage. Yep, and I'm still alive. Oh, you're still alive? All right, he's fucked. All right, Sataria, it's, it's your move again if you're here. Oh. She disappeared. We, actually, we lost Sataria completely. It looks like she lost connection. Yeah. Um, oh, no. Nope, she's back in the chat. She's back in on deck. Yes. Oh, delightful. It's your turn. Sataria, it's your move. <laughs> All right. Um, Who's all still left? The, well, the knight, knight looks what, the weird. only the knight is the only one left, and I've been torturing him. I love him a lot. Is he gonna confess to everything that he's done? We have two. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Let's review. Two of them are asleep. It is the archer and the priest. The knight uh -huh. is still awake, and the bard is dead. Uh, okay. So we have case. two of them are, but two of them are. Asleep. Two of them are still asleep. That. Okay. All right. In that case, lead it to sleep and attack the knight. Drop him out, please. Uh, you hit him. Uh, and is and is uh Baxter still near me? Yeah, you've got advantage. I mean, you've got sneak attack because you got Zark there too. Stab him. Oh, that's that's all. That's all I need to see. And there's one, and there's two. Oh yeah. With that, you <laughs> shah, stab him right in the back. Just ah. And he collapses upon the ground, uh, dying. Okay, I, I, so <laughs> I as, just grin. Uh, I just grin as he, as he, as I see him dying. As he collapses um, upon the ground, uh, you guys you make find... up your mind which uh, which two you want to keep alive. I'll be right here on the side. Guess as long as uh, you can... uh, I'm gonna gather up my webbing from the uh, the skeleton yeah. and you're, you're use it to, to tie up the two sleeping. Adventures. Now, Zach, you said you wanted him to suffer, right? Yeah. Is is the knight still technically it quote dying? You might want time down and uh, have him watch this. You're gonna like this part. 
Um, the Baxter says as he's tying up the uh, the good well, and tight the <laughs> bar to the other I, one. Can I cast Cure Wounds so he's technically not dying, but he's still pretty bad? Keeping this uh, keeping this kind of G-rated here to some degree, or PG-13, Oh, I the, think we we fade out on the them being tied up because we've also gone a ways over. Ah, uh, um, yeah, we're not gonna get, we're not get the brutal. <laughs> but Jeremy, they haven't uh -huh. met what Baxter I'm only does. I'm the ones that are that are asleep, and I'm hog tying in a cartoonish manner. <laughs> his if that makes it, his... If that makes it better. If that makes it. So, what uh, what terrible thing happens to them, Baxter? What do you do? Well, we you. select the knight. We hit Baxter digs a hole. Places. Oh, don't bury him alive, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is what Baxter does. <laughs> no, but and as Baxter go, buries the, this, the skeleton. I take his armor first beforehand because his armor. Oh, you can take him naked for all you yeah, want. Yeah, uh, yeah, but they go in the hole. And the knight gets to watch this. And Zarax gets an understanding of what the old man actually does. And as uh -oh. Baxter uh, smiles and laughs to himself in the night, uh, burying the night, uh, Sataria and Zarax are filthy rich. Uh, they, uh, to, the party together, that adventuring party, uh, had about 800 gold worth of stuff upon them. So you were able to <laughs> pilfer and distribute that between yourselves as you will. And uh, a few moments later, as uh, all the chaos is coming, the little chirping of the cockatrices uh, herald the arrival of uh, of Nal, who goes, Ah, uh, yes. Oh, you killed them. Ah, uh, dang. Oh, well. Sucks to suck. Uh, here's your Bartholomew box. Thank you very much. I appreciate your now, help. No, no. Uh, well, before yes. we leave, you should probably let uh, the people in town know that your little neck of the woods is off limit to adventure. Yeah, I think he'll put up some signs. No, 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 go to go in town to go in town and, go in town and talk to the guard. Maybe I'll hire some adventurers for that PR. Anyway, regardless, thanks. Thanks very much. I'm going to go back and continue working on my shoe. I look forward to having discussions. I can't wait to see this. what other dances your skeleton buddies can do. <laughs> Frostbite's yeah. going to go back in town and try and make sure the town understands that Null is not a danger. <laughs> yes, uh, Baxter. If you ever do wish to talk about the the um the husbandry of cockatrice, please uh, feel free to stop by. You can have some tea. I can show you their dance. They're getting very good. Uh, but otherwise, to it. take good care for now. He, goodbye. And he, he leaves. And you are two hundred Bartholomew bucks richer, one point of XP richer, and our adventure has come to its close. Uh, thank you guys for playing. Hey. Sorry that went over. Pat. It happens, but we were, we were but behind already. it wouldn't be yeah. a proper hey, Baxter Indeed. adventure if somebody didn't get buried. It's I true. just want to say it's... vengeance felt so good. You guys were brutal to them, but you know what? <laughs> they kind of deserved it. Yeah, I'd say they they mostly deserved it. Uh, I mean, do, no do you see the crew thing. that you assembled? What did you think was going to happen? Exactly that. <laughs> Would anyone like to shop real quick? Or uh, yeah, sure. Let's roll it. 